am I on? <laughs> I don't even know how this damn thing works. Okay, if I'm on, let me look and see if it's moving. Oh, hell yes, <laughs> it's moving. Okay, director, cut this part out. <laughs> oh, okay. The um, thing I wanted to talk about this moment is about the 2,000 strapling warriors in the Book of Mormon. Uh, a gentleman wrote to me and asked me about uh, the word liberty. He says, you know, I'm a little suspicious when I hear Mormons um, use the word liberty. I said, well, <laughs> you should be. <laughs> now, I'm just telling, I read the Book of Mormon probably 35 years ago. Uh, and maybe it'd be 40 years ago. <laughs> I don't know. And, you know, being bipolar, we have pretty good memories. We're not, we don't have photographic memories, but we have pretty good memories. So if you Mormons <laughs> see the devil talking or going, he doesn't know what he's talking about, stay with the principle. <laughs> it may have been 2001 Strapley Warriors. <laughs> but this is how I was taught, and this is how I remember the story after a half a century. <laughs> That's a long time to be such an idiot to be in a cult. Well, I'm a slow learner. Okay, now here's the story as I remember it from seminary. <laughs> the only other things I remember from seminary are one or two girls. <laughs> and they're so happy that they didn't marry me. The poor ones that did, well, you know, they deserve that punishment. Okay, here's the Book of Mormon story. There was these. Uh, there was a war. <laughs> Everything is a war in the uh, Book of Mormon, and and there's not you know a hundred men against a hundred. It's always millions. <laughs> there wasn't a million people in South America <laughs> during the whole Book of Mormon history. But anyway, millions were fighting each other, and it's a coincidence. We've never found a sword. <laughs> We've never found a helmet. We've never found a breastplate. And we've never found any bones or any restrooms for the millions that died. Um, it's just lately, the, uh, I'm just going to get off the point for a second here. It's just lately that one of the apologists uh, mentioned that when Joseph Smith said that they had chariots uh, and um, were fighting with chariots, um, there, was no, <laughs> there was no wheels. <laughs> 600 years before Christ there wasn't such a thing as a wheel all right so the and there were no horses <laughs> but the Mormons their Jesus gets them out of this every time okay the horses came from um, I, the Spaniards I believe it was the Spaniards that brought the horses uh, to the uh, the, um, North America and South America and they migrated down so but Joseph Smith said that they had horses <laughs> and chariots well now the apologists are going well we don't think there were horses and chariots <laughs> Shit. the rest of the world has said that for 200 years it's just the Mormons are catching up with their Book of Mormon history so here's here's what the apologist said that Joseph Smith said, that Jesus said, and Moroni wrote down. There's no chariots. We know that. There's no wheels. We know that. So why did Joseph translate the most correct book on the face of the earth with those kinds of major errors? Well, here's what the apologist said. And oh my God, I read this and it was like, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, 15 pages. I mean, they went on and on, and it couldn't be one sentence. And of course, <laughs> here's, here's what I know about life. When somebody says to you a question, if you have a one or two word answer, it's probably the truth. <laughs> when they go into a discourse that goes on and on, and, and you're just asleep listening to it, you can pretty much sure it's a lie. <laughs> so anyway, this thing was like 15 pages long. And now the Mormon church, or the apologists are saying, um, no, you're, you're right, there's no horses, and there's no, uh, I don't think there were any camels either. And he said there was wheat and barley and other kinds of crops that... We're never in, in South America, but anyway. Uh, 
the Mormon Church now apologists say it was a chariot. <laughs> Only a Mormon can believe this. I could tell my nine year I should bring my nine year old in here and say this to her face. <laughs> and she'll go, Dad, that's stupid. <laughs> there were it was a chariot, but it had no wheels. <laughs> Jeez. How do you fight? On a sled. <laughs> if you're in Alaska with sled dogs, maybe. I don't know. I've never been in Alaska. But, you know, this was done in the open here in South America with the trees <laughs> and the bushes <laughs> and no wheels. So this warrior stands on a sled. <laughs> now, since there were no horses <laughs> to pull this sled, they've turned to reindeer. <laughs> I think someone's been watching Santa way too much. <laughs> Jesus. So a reindeer, you know, is not a really easy animal to train <laughs> to pull a sled. If you could catch one reindeer, you'd be a lucky man. Uh, so anyway, now the Mormons are going, well, we're having a little trouble with the Book of Mormon. So let's take the wheels off of the sleds uh, and turn them in, or the chariots and turn them into sleds. And then let's get rid of the horses because they didn't even exist. And we've got 1,900 uh, Hebrew words um, that mean uh, a deer or a horse or a pig or a dinosaur. <laughs> they went on and on until my nine-year-old wouldn't believe it. And, you know, if you're a Mormon you want to believe it, I don't care. That doesn't, that doesn't hurt me, but I don't believe it. So the things that Joseph said were here we're not here <laughs> and now Moroni the Mormon church has Moroni in a I think what's the name of that famous uh, painter that uh, Freeberg that just died oh well three years ago or five or something and and he painted you know these these images for the Mormons and he has Moroni leaning against this hill wounded and he's got his steel sword which there was no such thing in the in, in South America at that time they were still in the bronze and, and uh, iron age so there's no steel sword so he's got this steel sword across a huge breastplate I mean he looked like one of these guys that remember how they rode on horses and they had the big pole and they'd run into each other uh, what if, I can't remember what they call those uh, knights in shining armor or something anyway he looked like he had this breastplate on that must have weighed 150 pounds and he's leaning against the tree writing in the book of mormon and he's got this helmet <laughs> that must weigh another 150 pounds i mean the guy has got like 500 pounds of equipment on and he's huge i mean the guy is like a nine foot person and he's writing the last parts of uh, to joseph smith what the uh, the war of the millions were like but we never found his helmet <laughs> his sword or his breastplate and the other two million people we never found those either and now there's some apologists saying that maybe they dropped into the ocean <laughs> How can you believe this stuff? They two million people dropped in the ocean with their swords, and no scuba divers have found them either. So anyway, anyway, picture Moroni, <laughs> this you know warrior like Ben Hur, <laughs> in a chariot race with no wheels on the damn chariot, and and he's going to whip the other guys on the other sleds. <laughs> And they're all being pulled by reindeer. <laughs> Jeez. I can't take it. I just can't take it. This is the most comic group of people I have ever seen or ever have uh, associated with. And how the hell I could have believed. Well, this is a new idea. I thought they had wheels. So it made some sense to me. But a sled with a warrior on it uh, on you know terrain that's like the desert or the grounds and jungles of the uh, South America I, I just don't see it I don't see it well let me get back 
cut to the uh, the strapling warriors. Now, strapling means to me. Now, I, I'm not an English major. <laughs> you know, I'm a bad speller, <laughs> and this hand here doesn't type very well because of my quad bypass. These three fingers are just gonna do this, and I gotta go over with this hand and fix it. And sometimes I'm too tired and too lazy, so I say screw it. If they don't like it, <laughs> don't read it. <laughs> so a strapling warrior. <laughs> is not a nerd or a geek. They're not little skinny guys. A strapling warrior is a big, strong, tall, maybe dark and handsome. No, he couldn't have been dark because he would have been a Lamanite. And they're loathsome people, so it, he wasn't dark. He was tall and handsome and white and delightsome. Well, and again, Freeberg, he, he painted this picture of these 2,000 strapling warriors, okay? They're big and husky and handsome. And well, in fact, uh, what makes me think about it is um, uh, Nazi Germany. Now, I don't think they were goose-stepping <laughs> the way they, the Nazis did, but I mean, they looked like they were in that picture, and that's what the Mormons believe is that picture, that they're ready for a fight. Well, um, they they were ready for a fight uh, not with steel swords because they still didn't exist but they all had a steel sword in their hand well they went off to fight and i can't remember the king that sent them but the principal is the same he sent two thousand uh strapling which again has to be pretty young i don't think anyone would look at me and say he's a strapling <laughs> A warrior, take go, Jesus! He couldn't fight his way out of a paper bag. So anyway, anyway, um, they sent him off into a war. Okay, now if you're sending two thousand men uh, into a war, and they're marching because. <laughs> We know they don't have chariots. You can't put that many guys on a sled. You know, in the Philippines, they used to have a joke. How many people uh, can you put on a motorcycle? And the answer in the Philippines is one more. <laughs> I've seen 12. I've seen 12 on a motorcycle with these eyes. <laughs> and they're all smiling and happy. But these warriors, um, you couldn't get 2,000 on a sled. <laughs> and the reindeer would turn around and go, we're going with Santa. <laughs> This is too big of a job for, and we're union. I <laughs> love that in Utah. It's a right to work state. They hate unions. They hate fairness. Anyway, they go off to war and they're taking their swords and their strapling bodies. And they go into battle, according to the Book of Mormon story that I remember. Now, <laughs> they may have changed it because they've changed, I think, 3,000 words or things in the Book of Mormon. Uh, the most correct book on the face of the earth. <laughs> a Webster's Dictionary has never had that many corrections. But anyway, these guys are going off to war and they get there and they're, you know, stabbing the enemy and, you know, there's a huge war. And 2,000 guys, that's a, that's a pretty good army. I mean, it's not, you know, 100 guys fighting each other in a bar. So now um, they win the battle. Okay, now, now here's what the Book of Mormon says as I remember it, okay? And uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. The word liberty was put on a flag, according to the Book of Mormon. Now, I don't know uh, how they did that. I don't know if it was, uh, you know, I want to get my, uh, I don't have the liberty flag, <laughs> but I want to show you what a flag, it usually has a pole, and, uh, you know, they had a flag on the uh, prairie there that said liberty. Well, that's the um, myth and the uh, tradition of the Mormon church. So the word liberty has more than the meaning that you think it has. Liberty means we fight to the death. We always win. And here's the catcher. Not one of the strapling warriors was killed or wounded in a major battle. So liberty to the Mormons means jihad. Jihad. We don't strap bombs on guys, but you know we send them out and God uh, protects them in their garments and uh, they can be stabbed with swords and the swords just bend. You know, it's kind of like a Superman movie, I guess. So anyway, now here's what I'm thinking. Okay, now this is just my experience. I was never in the service 
And now the Mormons are going to say, see, he's an apostate, and he's an atheist, and he didn't serve. No, I didn't serve in Vietnam, and um, I didn't think that those bouncing Betty uh, hand grenades that jumped up off the ground waist high and blew off your penis and your testicles was a good idea. I just said when I was in high school, you know, that doesn't seem good to me. I just, you know, so, you know. I had deferments. BYU was good about that. And father deferment and <laughs> scary deferment and Canadian deferment. I didn't go to Canada, but I certainly would get in uh, maps. <laughs> so here's the strapling warriors. They raise the liberty flag. So they're all, you know, chanting and, and uh, they may be going to Pele Ale or Go oh God, hear the words of our mouth. I don't know what they were chanting, but they were, you know, saluting and uh, I pledge allegiance to the liberty flag. So the liberty word has a lot more meaning to Mormons than it does to ordinary people. It's Mormon jihad. Uh, it is, um, uh, well, I'm, I, I'm not going to back away from it. It's Mormon terrorist talk. Now, here's my experience and i wasn't i told you i wasn't in the military if you send <laughs> two thousand guys out in the desert and they are in loincloths <laughs> and all a loincloth does is it kind of just covers your genital area and you have a, a huge steel sword no helmets. The strapling warriors had no helmets. Go look at the picture Freeburg drew. And they don't have any helmets and no protection. And I don't think they had boots either. Let me take. Children, go answer the phone, please, and help mom bring the groceries up. <laughs> Staff, director, light man. <laughs> There's no one here. Holy Ghost, a little help here. <laughs> now, if you send two hundred or two thousand strapling warriors out in the desert marching, <laughs> you gotta have at least one sword <laughs> stick into someone's butt. <laughs> there has to be at least one injury getting there. You know, there has to be. Um, the idea that these two guys or two thousand guys went into battle and there was absolutely no injury. I'm sure the Pentagon would like to know more about their their battle cry and their flag. So if you believe 2,000 guys dressed in bathing suits with a big sword walking through the desert and they get into a full battle with another country or another army and none of them get a scratch and they come home. Now here's, here's another one that only the Mormons know. They come home and they say, it's our mothers that kept us safe. Well, I don't know if the mothers were out in front of the army or whatever, but I think what they were saying is that our mothers taught us to be true and to be good Mormons and honorable and honest and the Lord protected us. It was like a garment story, you know, that J. Willard Marriott said he was on fire in his boat. I don't know how he caught on fire, but anyway, he says his garment saved his life uh, and maybe his money, I don't know. But anyway, uh, somebody should have been hurt in that uh, battle. And uh, the warriors all said it was up to their mothers. Now, I've heard, and, and I believe, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, truth to that particular uh, acronym. But to believe that 2,000 men fought a huge and battled uh, uh, war I guess they killed every living man that opposed them because one of them could have jumped up and poked a guy in the butt with his sword. And they go, well, there was 1,999. Jimmy got <laughs> his butt cut <laughs> by the asshole that we never killed. We were showing mercy, and damn, the story has got to be different now in the Book of Mormon. So anyway, if you believe that, <laughs> Most of us have a lot of land, <laughs> beachfront in Arizona. But they said their mothers protected them and trained them well. There's certainly nothing wrong with saying that. Uh, but the, it's a little stretch of the truth, I think. I don't know, but you decide. Strapling Warriors, 2,000, unhurt. Thanks.